Hi, I'm Wayne Jones. This is episode one of Re-Christian. It's all right there in the first paragraphs of the one book that God wrote. All there, everything about his personality, even before he started killing people in the Old Testament and later arranged for the killing of his own son in the New Testament. Quote, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the water. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Unquote. God debuts and establishes himself as a controlling narcissist. He makes light, he loves what he made, but then he decides to create the opposite of a light for some reason. This is how it would always be throughout the biography of him that people call the Bible. He does whatever he wants, he is always right, and he has no consideration for the effects of his actions on people, animals, or the planet in general. We subsequently find out that he is omnipotent, all-powerful, and omniscient, all-knowing, but he can't make it through a week of continuous work and so takes the seventh day off. Has your experience on the earth been such that you can understand how he could justify taking a day off? Has living on earth been perfect for you? Does the earth seem like there are no improvements to be made? I don't think I'm speaking only for myself when I say that I wish he had used that seventh day to finish a few things off, just as you would, say, devote the extra time to reread your term paper before you submit it, or tighten the nuts and bolts on the car at your automobile maintenance shop before the customer arrives to pick it up. After Adam and Eve went forth and multiplied, and there were more people, then as now, after this first experience of giving humans clear instructions, God has made it a game in which we have to guess whether he exists at all and therefore risk the fires of hell over the comforts of heaven. It's the lounging on the clouds that I'm most looking forward to, as I occasionally have sore back issues. He isn't direct and explicit anymore. Why doesn't he just come out and make it clear that he exists so that people then can be sure of the choice of life they want to make on earth based on what fate they can then expect after they die? Sure, yes, he has appeared on the occasional taco, or he's caused a few statues to bleed water in apparent defiance of the laws of nature. But I'm talking about something as clear as a contract. I am God, he might announce while interrupting all legacy media social media, and streaming services. If you are a good person when you die, you will ascend to heaven to be with me and with all other good people. If you are a bad person, then you will descend to hell and burn. And both of those are for eternity, by the way. But no, nothing. The reason may be that though he is all-powerful and all-knowing, nobody has ever claimed that he is very smart. He's kind of like the United States in that way. They have the world's largest military, and they're even spying on their own citizens. But, come on, in the geopolitical aggregate, the country is dumb as fuck. It's important to see God in some of that new light he allegedly created on the first day. Apart from the penchant for killing, turning people into pillars of salt and a swath of other abominations from the old days, he has not been a good steward of what he's often claimed as the peak of his achievement, the creation of the human race. There are issues. One is that I would have hoped and expected that humans, created by a perfect God in his image, would maybe not be perfect but be much closer to perfection than we manifestly are. Let's say there's a scale of perfection from 0 to 10, 0 being like any movie with Vin Diesel in it, and 10 being no country for old men. I'd give our species about a 3. I don't mean to harp on God unilaterally taking a day off because he was tired. Perhaps the first recorded instance in history of someone calling in sick for work when they really weren't. But he might have gotten a lot done on that seventh day and raised our rank to four or five at least. 
The second thing, though, is that after the initial fireworks of our creation on day six, God both abandoned us and left temptations in our way to trip us up. Most of us know about Adam and Eve and the tree and the apple and the snake, but there's an important note here that many people ignore. That tree was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So this machination, this game involving Adam and Eve is the first of many he would go on to perform to the delight of some and the demise of others for years to come. Essentially, he tempted them with a tree, declaring it would be bad and cause death. But that tree, in fact, provided the knowledge of good and evil, which might have prevented Eve from biting into the infamous apple in the first place. It was the first Catch-22, about 6,000 years before that novel was ever published. And so the hapless Adam and Eve were stripped down, naked, and thrown out of Eden. Fast forward to the present day. We're kind of floundering down here on Earth. Wars, people starving in one place and dying of obesity in another. Wildfires here, floods there. Oh, and the potential killing of the planet, if you're convinced by the evidence of climate change scientists. That one's got to count for something. God, theoretically benevolent, is indifferent. He's the asshole and deadbeat dad who abandons his girlfriend as soon as he finds out she's pregnant. And he's just like the universe he created. Stoic, indifferent. When a little girl drowns and the family is shocked and then have their lives changed forever in her absence, the universe does not even shrug. When a little boy is raped and sodomized by a Catholic priest, neither God, nor the universe, nor the Vatican, nor the infallible Pope even wince. This earthquake of physical and mental trauma doesn't even register on their poorly calibrated Richter scales. So that's what I have such trouble and disdain about. Everyone remembers God when a poor family wins the lottery or someone is rescued from a well, but not when he's carrying out his day-to-day campaign of fucking people over.